Hi, this is Teacher Jennifer with U.S. Citizenship Podcast. Today we're going to talk about shutdown advisories that have been posted on the following websites. USCIS.gov, Customs and Border Patrol, TSA, and the State Department. All of were posted on December 21st or 22nd, 2018. As of December 25th, 2018, the Department of Homeland Security and ICE do not have shutdown advisories posted on their websites. Let's begin with USCIS. The government shutdown does not affect citizenship services. USCIS will continue to process USCIS Form N-400 applications for naturalization and interview applicants for U.S. citizenship. Their offices will remain open and all individuals should attend interviews and appointments as scheduled. USCIS will continue to accept petitions and applications for benefit requests except noted below. Some USCIS programs, however, will either expire or or suspend operations or be otherwise affected until they have received the appropriate funds or are reauthorized by Congress. These include the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Regional Center Program. Number two, E-Verify. Number three, Conrad 30 J-1 Doctors. Number four, Non-Minister Religious Workers. Please visit USCIS.gov for further information. The second department we will talk about is U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, or CBP.gov. On their website, it said, due to the lapse of federal funding, this website will not be actively managed. This website was last updated on December 21, 2018, and will not be updated until after funding is enacted. As such, information on this website may not be up to date. Transactions submitted via website might not be processed, and we will not be able to respond to inquiries until after the appropriations are enacted. However, you still can get up-to-date information that you need on airport or border wait times before you begin your travel. Further note, U.S. Citizenship Podcast will return to the CBP website in early 2019 to follow up on some of the scams that target immigrant travelers. The third department we would like to visit is Transportation and Security Administration. On the website, there was no shutdown advisory, but there is a very helpful Ask TSA blog post with travel tips. In addition to removing electronics larger than a cell phone, TSA recommends separating foods, powders, and items that can clutter bags to facilitate screening process. They also have a very helpful video about preparing carry-on bags for security screening. See the show notes for more details. The final department we would like to visit is U.S. Department of State Consular Affairs. The notice says, At this time, schedule passport and visa services in the United States and at our U.S. embassies and consulates overseas. will continue during the lapse in appropriation as the situation permits. We will not update this website until full operation resume, with the exception of urgent safety and security information. The National Visa Center, the National Passport Information Center, and the Kentucky Consular Center will still accept telephone calls and inquiries from the public. Please note we will be closed for scheduled federal holidays on December 24th, and 25th and will reopen on December the 26th. The question on everybody's mind is what can you do during the government shutdown? Number one, check the government websites or their social media accounts 
to find out how the shutdown will impact immigration and travel services that are important to you. Number two, carry the correct ID as you travel to and from your destination. This includes your state-issued ID, such as a driver's license, passport, and legal permanent resident card. Number three, make copies or take photos of your ID and record the number and keep the images and info in a secure but accessible place. Number four, take the same precautions for your family members. Note, the new federal requirements, commonly known as Real ID, begins on October the 1st, 2020. See the show notes for more details. Number five, if you have an opinion about the budget, immigration, travel, or any other topic, contact your representative by phone or email via senate.gov or house.gov. Frequently, the website will ask about your zip plus four, which is your zip code plus your route number, which you can find by following the link to usps.com and entering your street address. You can also write or call the president. The address is the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. Phone number 202-456-1111. Thanks to the students and staff of Milpitas Adult School. A special thanks to all federal employees. You deliver on America's promise. Please visit us at the web at uscitizenpod.com. Thanks for listening. I know that you will be a great American citizen. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.